The Premier League is finally back and Manchester United will be taking on Brighton this weekend, specifically on Saturday. Very, very excited for that game. We actually have an action-packed show. Um, one would think that after an international break, it will just be a normal match preview. But no, 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 that's not the case if you are a Manchester United supporter. We have a lot to get into. Sancho and Tenag. Uh, Maguire, why are we still talking about Maguire? It's so irritating. After every international break, every time he plays for England, Manchester United have to suffer the consequences of the media. Um, Hoyland is going to start. So one positive we have, Hoyland is going to, well, maybe not start, but in my prediction he will start, but he will definitely make an appearance and possibly a full debut. So very excited for that. You know, with all the negativity surrounding the club, Hoyland is a positive as well as Amrabat. So there we go. What are we complaining about? I'll tell you what we are complaining about in today's show. But don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and welcome to the final whistle. So yeah, before we get into Amrabat and Hoyland, I just wanted to speak on Jaden Sancho and I think... Um, let's just give everyone a brief overview for those who don't know. So, Sancho was left out of the squad versus Arsenal. Tenag told the media that it was based on, or Sancho was left out due to his um, performance in training. Sancho then came out, refuted what the manager said, said he's technically scapegoated. He left that post up for quite a while, which, I mean, to um, release a statement like that is already bad enough, but then to leave it up is even worse. Then he took the post down and we thought, okay, we're making progress. Um, but then rumors came out that Sancho didn't want to apologize for Ten Hag. Now, in my opinion, it's absolutely disgraceful of Sancho. Um, and you know, people will say Ten Hag shouldn't have sp uh, spoken about him in the media. Well, Ten Hag didn't say anything bad. Ten, uh, it's, it's, Ten Hag is not going to lie to the media. You know, he said, Sancho was not good enough in training. What would the other person do? Head down, work hard. And what did Sancho do? Sancho went to New York with Juan Basaka, but Juan Basaka isn't an issue. Sancho went to New York and he was at a party, which you would think that this guy is on £350,000 a week, one of the highest played uh, Premier League players in, in, the, in the league, in the English league. And this is his actions. I mean, it's not the first time that someone has spoken out about Sancho's um, performance in training, his punctuality. It's an absolute joke. It's an absolute joke. Now, I don't, I don't know, or I don't know who Sancho thinks he is, but he does not have the power to challenge the manager. He would have had the... You, okay, firstly, we are Man United. So let me retract that statement. He would have never had the power to challenge the manager. But if he wanted to stand a chance, he needed to show it on the pitch. When Sancho was left out against Arsenal, you didn't see any of the Manchester United fans go, oh my word, what are we going to do? Why isn't Sancho playing? This is ridiculous. Do you know why? Because it doesn't impact whether we have a good game or not. And that's on him. He needs to understand that that is on him. It's, 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 it's mind-blowing that he thinks he could challenge Ten Hag. Ten Hag, all the Man United fans want Ten Hag as the manager, or majority, I'll say 90% of Manchester United fans are happy with Ten Hag. We are not happy with Jadon Sancho's performance. And he needs to get it in his thick skull himself and Maguire. I... I and it's, it's, it's funny that it's two English players, you know. And I didn't want to make this about England. I'm a Brazilian uh, supporter internationally. Um, and I didn't want to make this about England, but it just goes to show that the media protects these players if they're English. And, you know, this is England's golden generation. England for a long time has had stellar teams. But what has England won? absolutely shit so i think the english media 
everyone that supports England and Gareth Southgate needs to look at it and think, do you know what? We're protecting players like Harry Maguire, Sancho. We're um, not playing players really like Foden. He's on the bench, all these things. Um, Maguire says that, I mean, Southgate says that Maguire's in the team because of experience. I mean, come on. You guys need to really have a long, hard look at yourself. Um, but yeah, back back to Sancho. Um, so, will he be sold? I think he should be sold. And the reason for that is it's been three years. Three years at Manchester United and he's done absolutely nothing. He didn't string together a good run of performances. He's been lackluster at training. Obviously, we're just taking Eric Ten Hag's word for this, but it has been the case at Dortmund, at City. Um, and for £350,000 a week, he needs to go. Eric Ten Hag has already gotten rid of Ronaldo. Okay, that's fine. Ronaldo had his own issues. But you know what? Ronaldo was our best player when he was speaking out against Ten Hag. So Sancho has nothing Nothing to say towards Ten Hag because his performances don't warrant him to speak out against the manager. Um, and I just think that what we would get for Sancho, even if we sell him at a loss, the wages is so enormous. That is three decent players. Three players that will be punctual in, for training. Three players that will actually want to improve at Man United. And you know what? If they get called out for something bad, they should put their heads down and perform, work hard, train hard. Not like Sancho, who, hey, I really, you know, you, you feel like you're repeating yourself talking about these players, Sancho, Maguire, but they are just so frustrating. And, you know, um, Maguire is another player who I think should just be sold. So Maguire is not starting for Manchester United. Over the international break, he makes a performance. <laughs> Let's give it a joke. He, he makes an appearance for England. And what does he do? He scores an own goal. Typical Maguire. At this point, we all actually, <laughs> it's actually expected. We feel sorry for him. We are wondering why he's in this position. That's what's baffling is that he can't make his club team, yet he makes appearances for England, who has some great centre backs wanting to challenge for a starting place for England. And we, we find ourselves as, as Manchester United fans in this position where every time we have to speak about Maguire. Gareth Southgate defends Maguire. There's pundits saying, you know, Maguire should start in a team. and all. Maguire is fifth choice, fourth choice centre-back for Manchester United. I, I really don't understand it. That why would we, first you have Ran, Lindelof, you have Martinez, and then you have Luke Shaw, and then you have Maguire. Now, for the game versus Brighton, we would expect Maguire to start if Martinez isn't available. And you know what's even more funny in the case of Maguire? Maguire, an adult man, gets his mother to speak out about abuse. What? I... Why is his mother making a statement for a son? He's an adult man. If he performed on the pitch, there wouldn't be abuse. Yes, we call him slabhead. Yes, we make fun of him because he's crap. And you know what? If he performed great, we wouldn't criticize him and we'd be proud to call him our slabhead. So just suck it up. Perform. Stop getting your mom to speak out. Stop getting Southgate to speak out. Even flippin' Tom Holland has come out to speak about Maguire. You don't give a flying F. Who cares what Spider-Man thinks about um, Harry Maguire? It's like, you know, the, that skit of, of, of Dave Chappelle where he says, um, in 9-11, the towers got attacked and, you know, we, we really got, uh, we really sorry and, you know, we have Ja Rule on the line. Who gives a, f a F what Tom Holland thinks? I really don't believe it. Tom Holland, oh, fucking hell, Spider-Man. I mean, and how does Maguire have the power to, to curate this type of PR spin? It's, it's mind-boggling. You know, if, 
if it was a Brazilian player, if it was a foreign player, the media would absolutely slate. Is that even a word? I think it is. But they would absolutely destroy a player for, for things that Harry Maguire has done and Jaden Sancho. Imagine Anthony rocks up late for, for training on multiple occasions at Manchester United. Do you know what the English media would be saying? They would be saying, how dare he? He's a professional, da da da. But what do they say about Jaden Sancho? Ah, oh, no, 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 it's fine, da da da. It's biased. It's English biased. And those two players are the negative aspect of this international break. Where over the international break, it could have been a time for calm, because you know what? We have Hoyland, we, who made a fantastic cameo. We had a fantastic cameo against Arsenal. I think so many Manchester United fans are so excited for this player. Yet, it's overshadowed by two old English players. Well, not old in sense, but you know what I mean, old at the club, but two English players who are struggling to make the team. Sorry, guys. Get out. We wanted to sell Maguire, and Sancho's most likely will he is going to be sold in um, January. Uh, but yeah, Hoyland is here, so hopefully he starts. I think he is going to have an amazing impact on this team. Um, from what is being said, I think they were mentioning Amrabat most likely starting, but definitely coming on from the bench if he is on the bench. So what I would do, I'd start both of them, and I think it's just going to uplift the Manchester United fan base. And Tenag, we are behind you. Never forget, we are all behind you. We support you. And all these players that have been causing this nightmare period for Manchester United, they can go. If they are not up to your standards, they can go. We're more than happy. I'm speaking for myself, and I'm sure a majority of people would agree with that. If players aren't up to Ten Hag standards, they can go. We're tired of Manchester United standards dropping. We always were a club with high, high standards. And we should never let that fall because that's what made us successful and will make us successful. Um, but yeah, back to back to um, Hoyland and Amrabat. So I hope they start. And then if they do start, there is one position that's obviously up for, for grabs and that is the right wing position. So, um, you know, <laughs> is Sancho just kept his mouth, he would have been starting today, but nonetheless, he won't be starting. Um, I think if, I think he shouldn't play Bruno. Bruno should stay at number 10. I think give Palestri a chance at right wing. I really think he, he, he deserves a chance. Um, give him a good two or three games, obviously depending on if we win this game, but... He really needs to have a, a good run of games. And I think it's going to do him well. I think Ten Hag, Ten Hag is not really a major fan of Palestri. He does see something there. And I hope that if Palestri does start, he, he makes an impact for Ten Hag. And Ten Hag will maybe notice like, okay, I'm starting to have more confidence in this player. So let's hope that Palestri does do that if he starts or if he comes on from the bench. Now is his time to shine. Anthony's not there, and Sancho's not there. And then another place that I think is going to be a topic, or a topic of discussion, is the left-back position. So left-back, a lot of people saying, Regulon, Regulon this, Regulon that. Leave the low. The low played so amazingly against Saka and Arsenal. Leave the low. He's played that position before, and I think there was a time, if I'm not mistaken, we scored from being a left back and Anthony came in from the right hand side, played a through ball and low scored. I think he was playing left back that game. But nevertheless, low was fantastic at left back. He was fantastic at one point, also at left back. So I think he should start. So I would do Anana. I would do Juan Basaka, uh, Lindelof. Martinez, if Martin is not available, Maguire, because Maguire is the fifth choice center back. So it's no abuse here. It's no criticism. That is where he is. Then DeLow. 
Then I would play Casemiro, Amrabat, Rashford, um, Bruno, Palestri, Hoyland. That is what I think the team should be. And I think that how I would want the game to go. I'd want us to control the game. I'd want us to be expansive. Yes, it's going to be... I think it's going to be goals at both ends and it's going to be a very fluid game. It's going to be up and down, up and down. But I think we should have an overall control of the game. In terms of what I think the match prediction will be, I think it's going to be a 3-1, two goals by Oiland and one goal by Bruno Fernandes. That's what I think. Let me know down in the comments section what you guys think the final score will be. And I will catch you guys in the match reaction. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Love you all. Peace.